Well, hey guys, going to take a look at I square R losses as that applies with audio. But, you know, it can really apply to anything. Whenever you're moving electrical power from one location to another, you're going to have losses. But we'll take a look at an audio system here and a good reason why you don't ever want to use 24 gauge wire. You want to use something heavier. And we'll make some assumptions here. Now a loudspeaker is a complex load. The impedance will vary depending on frequency. So we're going to just say this is a non-inductive 4 ohm load we have connected here. And we'll say that our amplifier can make 50 watts of maximum clean power in other words non-clipping or max power before clipping into a 4 ohm load. So if we connect the load to the output terminals here we're able to make 50 watts into a 4 ohm load. So we have our non-inductive 4 ohms connected here. We're not going to worry about losses in the cable and the internal part of the amplifier. So we need to find out what the output voltage is, the RMS output voltage. And we just take the square root of 50 watts times 4 ohms. 50 times 4 is 200. Square root is 14.14. So that's the RMS output voltage swing. And I'll note that here on our little diagram. Volt RMS. Okay. Now we'll pretend we want to run a 50 foot cable. It doesn't take much to use up 50 feet when you're running speaker cable. You know, when you run it around, you have to go over, you know, above in the ceiling and up and down along the walls. Eat that up pretty quick. And you have to consider when you're running cable. You're going out the distance and coming back. So it's actually a hundred feet of conductor that's being used. So you have to consider that when you're running the cable. The resistance of 24 gauge wire. I know some of my foreign viewers are complaining about why I'm not using metric. Even though, yeah, I agree, metric is much better, but we're, I'm just so accustomed to, you know, foot, pounds, inches, that, uh, yeah, I'm just using that for this video, but it's not a big deal to uh, convert and use metric. But anyway, using the American wire gauge, 24 gauge wire has a resistance of 25.67 milliohms per foot. In other words, it's 0.02567 ohms. And if we multiply that by 100 for our length of conductor, the resistance of the wire is 2.567. And I will notate that here. So we have 2.567 ohms per 100 foot of 24 gauge cable. And the total resistance, including the load, so the load plus the cable resistance is 6.567. In other words, this plus the 4 ohms. And that's what you get. All right, now uh, we're dealing with I squared R. I squared R, if I didn't mention before, you know, is equivalent to watts. And they call it, I square our losses because it's the power lost in the cable. And we'll look at that here. So I need to find the current in this circuit because we're dealing with, uh, you know, I square R. So, you know, that's what the video is about. I need to find the current to uh, calculate the I square R losses. Good old Ohm's Law again. Volts divided by resistance gives us the current. So we put 14.14 divided by the 6.567. 6, 
and we get 2.153 amps and uh, there's a value I'll pop that into memory so we'll always have that available as we do the calculations well first let's see how much power the amplifier is putting out now now we don't have four ohms anymore we have six point five six seven so uh, I hit remember here and square that because it's I squared R and multiply that by six point five six seven so now the amplifier is no longer putting out 50 watts it's only putting out 30 about 30 and a half watts our cable really you know increased the resistance and we lost all that extra power however that's not the power in the load the power in the load is the uh, current squared times the load resistance of 4 ohms 18 and a half watts now that's it because of that cable that 24 gauge wire we're only getting 18 and a half watts when initially our amplifier could do 50 watts and of course our total power minus that gives us the power lost in the cable and we can also calculate that with I square R bring up the current again and square it multiply it by the cable resistance 2.567 we're losing about 12 watts of power in that cable not that good is it we can see why using 24 gauge wire is not a good idea well so what can you do well you could use a lower resistance cable or a, which would mean a lower gauge cable like 14 gauge for example that's pretty common 16 would work and um, if you could shorten that distance for sure that would help so let's take a look at some different values here you know use a thinner cable and see what happens well to make this go faster I just made a spreadsheet spreadsheets are wonderful things you can quickly make calculations and you know show all the results all at once very nice and as you see here this is what we started out with that's the output voltage RMS from the amplifier the load that's the resistance of the cable per foot that's the distance we used and I made it calculate the resistance it automatically multiplies that by two because you have the going out and coming back distance of the wire making it a hundred feet and there's the power loss in the wire the power spent in the load and the total total power there so let's just say for example we use an 8 ohm load we have to remember since we're doubling the resistance or impedance this now becomes a 25 watt amp and uh, our power loss is not going to be as much about 19 you know, about 6 watts lost and 14 into the load into the speaker and almost five watts lost in the wire still pretty significant even with an 8 ohm load okay let's, let me set this back to four and using wikipedia the resistance of per foot of um, 14 gauge wire is let's see it's point oh oh two five two five and everything else being the same power total is now 47 we, we're losing uh, about 6 watts you know, not nearly as bad but we're still losing about 6 watts 
and about 3 watts in the wire with 4 ohm load. Let's take a look at 8 ohms. And 8 ohms, you know, it's so much easier to drive 8 ohm loads when you consider your cable distance. And again, our amplifier with the 8 ohm load is going to be 25 watts. And we're losing uh, about 1.5 watts in the, you know, total is less than a watt. But we're, we're getting... Uh, about one and a half watt watts less to the load and less than one watt lost in the cable so hopefully that makes sense you know decreasing the uh, resistance of the wire significantly reduces the loss let me set that back to four and let's say your amplifier and speakers are pretty close together it's only 10 feet and 4 ohm load again 14 gauge wire you're losing very little a little over a watt well I mean total lost is less than a watt but power delivered to your load is um, like 1.25 less than when it's connected at the amplifier terminals and loss in the wire is 0.62 much better okay well you can see why uh, transferring power is such a big deal you know think of transmission lines and getting power there's significant losses there they're moving tons of power megawatts of power and it just goes to show you how the wire can impact your, you know, the total power you get to your load. And of course, with audio, you see why you want to use a heavier cable. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching.